Let's have our daily reading. We are going to read from Philemon chapter 1. Okay, as we just finished the book of Titus. Paul, a prisoner for Christ, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house. And this is the house church that was happening over there. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. So at this stage of the ministry, Paul is a prisoner. He's in jail. He's working. And then we're going to get into his son on one this you miss in just a moment. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. Because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have towards the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love. My brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Accordingly, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required. Yet, For love's sake, I I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man, and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might be, might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted with you from a, for a while, that you might have him back forever. No longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant as a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in flesh and in the Lord. If you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. If he wronged you at all, if he has wronged you at all, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. To say nothing of your owing me, even your own self, yes, brother, I want some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. At the same time, prepare a guest room for me, for I am hoping that through your prayers I will be graciously given to you. Ephraim, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends greetings to you, and so do Mark Aristarius, Demas, and Luke, my fellow worker. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Paul has power to throw his weight around. In ministry, we can throw our weight around, right? You know what it means to throw your weight around? It means to just say things and and do things. But I like that... His approach is not just because I'm a senior member in ministry, I have the power to throw my weight around. I want to appeal to your heart. It's always great when you can win people over by their hearts rather than through dictatorship. It was said of Absalom, the son of Prince David, he won the hearts of the people. He would sit at the gates and he would say, you know what, I know you're on your way to see the king, but tell me what's your issue. And so while people were waiting in line, they would speak to him and and tell him all that was going on in their heart. All that was going on, how they were feeling about the court case that was about to come up before they saw the king. And he says, you know what? If only there was someone on your behalf who could appeal for you on behalf of the king. I'm one of the princes, by the way. Did you know that? And he would tell them. And, and then he would try to settle the matter himself in some cases. And other times he would just, just call to the crowds, man, wouldn't it be nice if I was had some level of 
of uh, able to recognition to settle the matters for you. And the more that the people really respected Absalom, the more they actually respected his rule and judgment when he did do things. So he was basically taking them to court before they got to court. And in this way, Absalom, it says, stole the hearts of the people. It actually uses the word stole the hearts. And that's, in some ways, you could say that's a bad thing for Absalom because he turned out to be a bad of heart. But if he was of good of heart, he's a person that has authority in our heart. These are like the people we look up to in our life, in our times. When we see people that are in authority, we respect their judgment. We respect their counsel. We respect their advice. In my lifetime, there's been a few main people that I've always looked up to and always respected. And and what they said went, and I didn't even question it. And all they have to do is just say the word, and I'd, I'd follow, or I'd command, like, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. And and I still have some people like that in my life from time to time, although it's getting much rarer at my age. There's a lot of people, especially when I was young, like my mother's one, I highly respect my mother. She would She used to be able to say something, and I almost took it always as the gospel truth. As I got older, I had to filter it out a little bit more, but... There's people I always just snap your fingers and I'll jump. Pastor Kim, do this and I'll wash the toilets for you. I'll shine your shoes, whatever you need. I live to serve you. And Paul is here in the passage having some of that similar similar power. He's, he's already an old man. He's a prisoner. He's been there. But he says, I appealed to you because of this reason. He says, I could throw my, I, I could tell you what to do, but... I prefer not to do nothing without your consent in order that goodness not that your goodness might not be compulsion by your own accord. And here is another part where he says a, a similar thing. He even rem- he even I don't want to say this is a guilt trip, but if he wanted to, he could. He petitions them. If you consider me your partner, but he's actually their elder. He's actually many of their father in the faith. And here he's talking about Onesimus. And Onesimus was one brother who was, he says, formerly he was useless to you. And this could have been a brother. Maybe he was a recent new convert. Maybe he was of a bad spirit and bad attitude, bad heart. But his one-on-one training with Paul and his work or his ministry with Paul caused Paul to become a father to him. And he took him up and he trained him and he vested his life and his heart. And now he's saying, listen, when you receive him like you're receiving me. And if he did anything wrong in the past to you guys, I want you to know, chalk it up to my account. If he owes you any money, take it on my half. That's how much I'm giving him my seal of approval. And it's always wonderful when the elders give the seal of approval to the younger man. Uh, when to the younger people like he did, uh, like Paul did earlier with Titus. It's a very powerful thing to, I'm oh, sorry, to t- about Timothy. When he was sending him to you, he's saying, don't look down upon him because he's young. He's giving his seal of approval. And that's a wonderful thing about our elders. This is almost a continuation of um, what we were talking about earlier um, on Monday about the elders, the council of elders. There's a passing down of the knowledge that we have. There's a passing down of our energy, our life, our, our missions, our goals, our values, our purposes that we have to do for the younger generation. It's so pertinent that we pass down what we're doing. And and when you're younger, a lot of people have an attitude that we think that we only are stronger if we build on top of each other like the backs of others. And we're only going to go higher if I can step on you to get higher. And people think like this, especially in Western societies when it comes to the corporate ladder. We're only getting higher uh, if we, you know, are building on top of somebody else. And that's exactly the opposite of how the Bible tells us because The Bible tells us that if we want to be the highest or the greatest, we have to become the lowest or least. We have to become the least. We have to actually step down. It's always lifting each other higher up. And sometimes that means you're the one in the prison. And and you're the one supporting your own ministry sometimes. And supporting the ministries of others. Now it's great when it works the right way and those the fruit is your food or it helps support you. But that's not always the case. And so, unfortunately, sometimes the pastor or the leader of the church is the first to stay and the last to go. And sometimes it's the pastors or the leaders who are the ones who are the biggest givers in the church. And, and sometimes that's the case for a number of years for many of you who are uh, going out and doing ministry and to, to remove the blinders from your eyes, letting you know how, how it actually works in real life, that you are sometimes that attitude. Now that can cause a, a resentment type of attitude in your heart. Unfortunately, that 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 leaves a bad taste in the mouth from people who go into ministry with the mindset that they're here for me. Well, 
you're here for them. Go in there with that mindset from the beginning. And no matter who shows up or who doesn't show up, you're going to be the same either way because you're already it's not that you're setting the bar low. It's that you're setting the bar in the correct in the correct precedent. The precedent is that not president, but the precedent, meaning you're going in that direction. That's the principle by which you work. And if anything helps, everything else goes differently. If you get rich in the ministry or something, all of that is just icing on the cake. The real cake is the real root or the meat of the matter is that you're there to serve. Okay, so whether you're rich or you're poor, it should never affect you, right? Uh, if you're suffering in the ministry, you already knew you were going to suffer anyway. I understand some of these things because in a unique way, I'm telling you from personal experience. So if you guys are feeling like you're struggling and you're a minister or someone new and you're struggling, you're not alone. I'm, I'm saying this not just from I was a pastor. or sorry, uh, I've been a pastor, I should say. <laughs> and I, I had a church for, for five years, a physical church. Now our ministry is only online. But also because since I was a young boy, my dad was sent out as a minister in Glendale, Arizona. He was sent out to be a pastor. He started his own church. And then I think after, what, 12 years, they asked to merge the church back together. This is something that we saw. I got to see my dad be a pioneering pastor. It was very small. We had church out of our house for a number of years in our little tiny apartment. It was a real tiny apartment, but we still had people from the neighborhood coming down and my dad won them over for the Lord. And so what happens is I, I got to see him, his expectations. It wasn't high. It was that I'm here to serve. And there was some of us, my dad wasn't a perfect man, but I'll tell you what, he had a right heart going into the ministry. He knew that I'm here to work. I'm here to serve. My job is to bring you to Christ. I'm here for you. Whatever you want, we do for you. And what's the attitude that you have? But people go into ministry nowadays because of all kinds of ambitions. And under those false pretexts, they get themselves into trouble quite a bit because you're setting yourself up for failure. So as we finish today's reading, I want you, we can look at Paul and he's saying, listen, I'm in prison. I'm living my ministry through the next generation. I've been investing in Onesimus. I want you guys to receive it, him like that. And I could do this all out of just throwing my weight around. As he said, where's this part? Yep. Yeah, I could command you. I could command you and tell you what to do. But for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you. I prefer to let it be from your own heart that he's saying this. But he could throw his ministry weight around. So it's always... Just a step back and for, for many people, especially if you are a, a pastor who has lots of people in your church, there's a default that you're somebody great, right? Because you have lots of followers or, and we're tempted to just stay in that rather than become and stay people who we, how we started. And that was, I'm here for you. I'm here to serve all of you guys. Not, you're not all here to serve me. It's so easy when you're a, at the celebrity level to act like a celebrity. And unfortunately, that's uh, that's always the case. For ministries uh, or ministries that are really large, you're elevated to celebrity levels. For ministries, you guys become a face for people. You become a, a, a type of celebrity for people. You become like a father to, to many people. You know, the, the people like David, when he comes in the city, he's celebrated. And that's sometimes the case. It's so easy to stay in that mode and that mindset all the time rather than to come off of your high horse and go back and serve the people like it's it should be so easy for you to walk off the stage and get down and talk to the people as it is to be on to be on the stage and be in front of the people i was at the conference the crypto christian conference and i remember that brother he says man i've been wanting to talk to you and I, I said, yeah, what's going on? And, and I went up to him in the front of the booth and, and he says, listen, you're just so approachable. You're just so approachable. I, I feel like I can just go up and talk to you. And I'm like, and I came and I was like, you can talk to me. Like, you can reach out and give me a hug, man, if you want to. And I'm not, we, we've got to be genuine with people and really love people. And if you love, if you just really love people, you're going to be like that. And just, if you, it's almost a grassroots heart tart to help thing it's almost like how trump is he's willing to serve mcdonald's hamburgers to the common or he's willing to stop to people and sign autographs or shake your hand or, and things like that he's that kind of person that's there and yet we see unfortunately <laughs> what was it kamala she didn't even she didn't even say goodbye to her followers and yet she still has the audacity to ask them for money they waited on the news channels that I was watching they were saying some of these people they were there for eight hours standing up just standing up and the newscasters multiple times told people they've been standing for eight hours plus on their feet 
like in the middle of the the dance floor like the bleachers were empty everybody's just there in the center hoping she comes hoping she comes and then turns out she's losing and she doesn't even come she just sends out one of her representatives saying uh she'll make a speech tomorrow and didn't even say goodbye to her followers and then still the next day there's reports of people receiving emails to help her raise money and now there's another announcement she's still raising money like you can't ask for people's hearts back if you're not willing to give their heart back and i and i think that uh, if if you're not willing to put your heart in, in in it as well and i think that's just a great ministry principle to live by um and uh, we can see it from both sides we can see when it's not when a ministry uh, is just in it for the benefits you're going to see it's very dis it's it leaves a bitter taste in your mouth and it makes christ look bad Christ was one he can look right in your eyes. He'll spend time with you. He'll care about you. Even to this day, his Holy Spirit is such that you don't even have to be perfect, but you need to ask him for the Holy Spirit. And it says he who he will give the Spirit without measure to him who asks. So he'll pour out his Spirit upon you, and you don't have to be worthy by his own goodness and his own worthiness. And as the Scripture said, while we were still yet sinners, Christ loved us and died for us. Father, we thank you for this morning, for the word room. I thank you also for the fellowship beforehand. I pray that uh, you would bless us in the chart room. I thank you so much that, that you are making us a people who can be people who give up their life. And I pray that we would be people who definitely give up our life and keep an ma- attitude serving. This message might be more important to all of us since we are, many of us will be millionaires and billionaires, perhaps through wealth transfer, many of our listeners will step into that type of wealth in the future when they're at those levels or if they're ever at those levels i pray that they would be a kind of people that is still approachable no matter what status or station they have brought to been brought to in life i pray that we would not be an arrogant people but or just even people who just only throw our weight around but we still appeal to people we still serve them we still love them we still have the values we still have the goals to pass down what we have learned we are still imparting life into others we can be the richest people of the land but if we are not real not genuine if we are not loving towards people then what are we what is it to gain the whole world and lose our very soul and the soul is a valuable thing. It's the most valuable thing. But next to the soul are the souls of others. And if we lose their hearts and if we lose them because of our arrogance, then what have we as well? I pray that we would use these times, no matter where, we're at in, where we are in life, to love others. So that we are, when we are elevated in our station, when we are elevated in life, in finances or in success, as it were, I pray that we would still be able to maintain that genuineness of heart whether we are the president of the united states whether we are the top dog or whether we're still a person the the poorest of the land i pray that we would be the same genuine people that we are and resist the temptation to become arrogant but we know that the scripture says that if we you will humble those who are exalted and and those who humble themselves will be exalted you will bring down the proud to the lowest and you also told us that that the before pride cometh before a fall. And I pray that we would be people that can put aside our pride, put aside our arrogance, so that we would be a people who stays and remains humble and loving. People who are still willing to wash feet. People who are still willing to be like the Good Samaritan and take the time to love somebody on the street, to care for somebody, to pray for somebody, to spend some time with somebody, to call somebody, or whatever it is we need to do for our life. I pray that we would be willing to get off a horse from time to time. And if that means we have to extend our reach, then help us to do using teams and other ministry people, Lord. And if we need to do that, then that's fine too. But I pray that we would never lose the heart behind it. Give us the strength to extend our reach and love others in a deep way. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. If you're watching this clip, this is our website. You guys can join us. If you're looking to uh, give to our ministry, you can find a link in the description. We sure do appreciate all your ministry gifts. Some those who are giving tithe and offering, 
to Word Room. We really appreciate you. Thank you. You guys keep us on the air supporting our ministry. These are the times when we link. Dive is $18 a whole month. You guys will get invited to our live sessions, links, chat with us, talk with us, get those charts immediately and get access to those charts. We have also the, our report tier for $12 a month and you'll get the recordings of all the videos plus the access to those and dive will give you those tutorial classes from sword method uh, 5.0 and 6.0 filmings 1 through 16.